Well, good morning and welcome to Coffee with the Pastor this morning. It's Monday morning, so let's get with it. Let's bring it on. Good week. Uh, we've been looking at uh, uh, what I call grace and space. How do we give grace and space to those who disagree with us? And at the same time, how do we ask for grace and space back so that people will hear our disagreement. And we live in a country that really doesn't want to listen to each other. And to be honest with you, I'm a little fearful. Uh, those on uh, both sides of, in our society of, of issues, especially political, just seem to the point of, of not uh, wanting to listen to each other, but maybe even want, wanting to bring violence to each other. And that's uh, that's not a good thing. But I think we here in the church, we're going to have to learn how to listen to those that, that disagree with us. And then we're going to have to ask and kind of demand grace and space for ourselves to be listened to as well. The best example of this that I know is Jesus. Jesus dealt with a lot of different type of folks and how he dealt with people. And He's going to have to become our example for that. Uh, and this week, I want to spend some time talking about how Jesus dealt with his, some of his disciples and, and kind of give their, I'll spend a couple of weeks on this. I'll, I'll talk this week about the disciples themselves, some of their characteristics, how Jesus really got kind of caught of a, a motley crew around him. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, yeah, these guys changed the world. And, uh, and so we're going to look at them and how he called them. And then uh, we'll look at uh, his interaction with them uh, probably next week. Uh, but let's read from Scripture about how he, how he uh, called them. This is from Mark chapter 3, uh, beginning with verse 13. Jesus went up on a mountainside and called to him, <coughs> I'm sorry, those he wanted. And they came to him. He appointed twelve that they might be with him and that he might send them out to preach and to have authority to drive out demons. These are the twelve he appointed. Simon, to whom he gave the name Peter. James, son of Zebedee and his brother John. To him he gave the name Moroginus, uh, which means sons of thunder. Another, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon the Zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. Uh, Jesus called himself 12 disciples. Now, we know from reading other portions of Mark last week, the people had dealt with, that there were lots of people following him. Uh, so much so, he had to stay outside with his followers because uh, anytime he went into a city it just was pandemonium and people would come and, and they found him out there so there were already lots of people around him but Jesus selects 12 to be uh, those that he would pour himself into that he would choose to lead uh, from then on and within the 12 he, he picks three uh, we try and do our churches a little bit that way. There, there's the crowds, which we have on Sunday morning. Uh, then we have classes that we want people to be a part of. And then we want people to be a part of a small group. And that's biblical. It's the way Jesus did it. It's the way we want to do it today. And you're not really getting all that you need to get if you're just doing one of those. If you're just coming to church, but you're not part of a small group, you're not part of a class of learning more, well, that's that's not enough. And so we encourage you to do all three. But let's talk about disciples in Jesus' day. Jesus is out in Galilee. And in uh, Jesus' day, rabbinical schools were pretty popular in Galilee, especially. Not so much in Judea, but in Galilee. They had already become very popular, where they probably had a Pharisee who was there teaching them. And... Uh, all the kids, boys and girls, in Jesus' day would go to school until they were 10. And up until 10, they would learn the Torah, which is the first five books of our Bible. And 
and they would they would literally memorize the Torah and just just learn it because it was important to them. That, that was their Hebrew, and there was 613 laws that Moses had given in Torah, and they had to learn every one of them. Uh, and they would do that till about 10. At 10, the girls would not go to school anymore, but they would start learning um, how to be a wife and mother, truthfully, from uh, how to do domestic things from, the, from, the, from their mothers. And so they would not come to school anymore. And then the boys would continue on learning the prophets and the, uh, and the Psalms and the uh, others. And so they would learn more. Now at 12, they only took the best uh, of the students, and they would continue on. The uh, ones who were just average students, uh, they would go then start working with their fathers or learn a trade, and they would be learning like that. But the 12 year olds would continue with their schooling, and they would start teaching them how to learn how to ask questions. How to ask questions about the scripture. And we see Jesus as a 12 year old boy at the temple. So obviously, he was selected to be one of those because he was amazing the uh, uh, teachers of law in Jerusalem with the questions he was asking. Uh, they, were, they were deep, they were, they were powerful for a 12 year old boy, and they would do that. And then, about 16, uh, the best of the best would be asked to become a disciple of the rabbi. And he would always have some that he would be training uh, to do more. They, they would start looking at what other rabbis had said. They'd start studying more. They would study more of the interpretations of things. And they would have uh, uh, disciples. Now, here's something that uh, will amaze you. I know most of the the paintings we have disciples kind of puts them as middle-aged men. That was probably not the case. Uh, they were probably teenage boys. Uh, that was a time that you typically called disciples. Uh, Peter may be an exception. He might have been in his early 20s because he was married. And that's usually when they married there in Jesus' day was in the early 20s uh, for men. For girls, it could have been anywhere from 12 to 14, 15. But, uh, but they, were, they were younger. In fact, I remember I had a, a member of a church before me, and, and the, a guy had grown up in our church, and uh, his mother went there. In fact, I had done his mother's funeral. But uh, he worked for a man who had drawn and made a picture of all 12 disciples. It was a best-selling book. The, the portrait was best-selling. Portraits of the individual disciples. He had made a book. It was a best-selling book. In fact, that guy sold so many of the books and so many paintings that this guy worked full-time for this artist. And he presented our church with a, a painting and uh, of the 12 disciples. And then he gave me a book with the, all the 12 disciples. And the only problem with it is they all were middle-aged men. And that's not the case. Uh, probably all of them are teenagers. We look about how long, much longer they lived after Jesus died in his 30s. And these guys, some of those guys lived a long time. Uh, John may have lived uh, almost to the next century. And so they would have been pretty young, uh, even if they lived to be very old. And uh, so Jesus called these disciples to follow him. He called them up onto the mountainside uh, to call them and to start training them. You know, the Sermon on the Mount was given to the multitude, was also given just to the twelve. And he trains the twelve. And we're going to look at the individuals uh, this week about who they were, what's their uh, characteristics, and, and look at how Jesus had such an eclectic group. Uh, his group was not well educated. He didn't get the best of the best like the rabbis did. Uh, he, he got uh, everyday guys, you know, he got fishermen and tax collectors, he got a zealot, and uh, he, he picked all kinds of different people uh, to do that. And we're gonna look at uh, each every one of them individually 
because uh, I think it would be important to kind of get who they were to understand their relationship later. I look forward to talking about the disciples and how Jesus trained people when he was on this earth. And so I'll see you tomorrow as we continue on talking about the disciples.